All right, so Angie by Simon and Garfunkel. This was released uh, for the Sounds of Silence album in 1966. And this song was originally written by a guy called Davy Graham, and it was also covered by Burt Jantz. And Burt Jantz is the guy that Jimmy Page listened to a lot and really was heavily influenced by. Of course, the version I'm doing is Paul Simon, right? He's the guy playing this. And I'm get, we're going to get right into it because there's a lot of stuff to cover. So we're in the key of A minor, but we've got a capo on the second fret, so that technically is a B minor. But I'm going to call it an A minor. I'm going to call that an E. So most of the song is A minor to E, A minor to E, right? Without bass line. So the bass line is going to start like this. And you'll notice i got a thumb over there, and you pretty well have to do a thumb over in this one. I mean, there are ways you can get around it, but it's actually, once you get used to, you know, gripping the guitar like that and getting your thumb over, it's the best way to do it. Okay, so that bass line again is just a hammer on of E3 to open A. So it's open E, G on E3, F. Stay, well, it's all on the E string. If you listen to the Davy Graham version, he's going to go... You know, he's going to that A, right? But the Paul Simon version, he's hanging around on that E a lot more. So again... Alright, and now the fingers are going to go like this. So we want to always think of A minor, E minor. When we're hammering on that G1, we're also, you know, hammering on that whole E chord. So we're getting that, getting the A and the D string to sound. And then we hammer on that A minor. We're just, just hitting the G string with our finger. So that's the first variation of that lick. The other variation was where we do in triplets. So we're going to go. And that right there is something you're going to have to practice because we, we've got to get that. on the G, second finger on the B. So you need to practice that. <laughs> and now we want to combine all of this with the bass. So we're going to play it really super slow. the first variation. Now let's do it using the second variation. And throughout the song, you know, he's just interchanging those. So sometimes he's going... So you can use or whichever one you want, basically, right? So that's the first pattern. Now, as that goes along, it's going to change after, I think it's three cycles. And it's going to change to this. Okay. Which, you know, when I, like I've heard this song a million times and I've never noticed that bass line is crazy. So after this, <laughs> so 
So we're going to go. E, G, E, F, A, E. Dun, 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 dun. And then the next cycle, we're going to actually go to the A. Dun. Okay, and now the fingers at that point are going to go. We're getting that high E in there. Then. Now we throw the bass in. And that there, that took me probably, well, a long time actually to, to get the coordination of that. And that's one of the best things about learning this song is it's just fantastic. It's almost like a drill, you know, to get that. Um, and if you have to go like glacier slow, to get that in your head, then just go glacier slow, because that's the only way you're going to be able to do it fast, right? So you're going to start out about like this. Whoops, probably more like this. And gradually, Okay, now I played, I made a bunch of mistakes there, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's it's just a really good good pattern to learn because it, it teaches your mind separation of your fingers and thumb, right? Okay, so we're going to do that for a bunch. And then we're going to go to the next section and we're going to lead it off by going hammer on to E3 and we're gonna go like this all right so the thumb is just gonna hang on that E string for the first little bit and the fingers are gonna go so we're bouncing everything off that A note And there's a live video of Paul Simon playing this, and he does, he bends with his, with his little finger like that, and I don't know, I can't do that. Maybe he's using lighter strings, maybe he just got stronger hands. But when I do that bend, I go, I change that finger there, and I go, and I use my third finger with support of my second finger. So, there, change. Now we're going to go, we're going to hammer on that E, hitting the G string, and then hitting G, B, and E. string hammer on the A minor that's a tricky part you know it's, it's like a real feel part and we're gonna 
finish it off by going so A string G E on the bass and then we're back into it of that section. Now the next section, it starts like that, right, just the A string and hitting the chord basically from the D string down. Now we're going to go so what I do is I'm just going to go A minor and I'm going to pinch the D string and the B string and pull off that chord. The G string is pulling off by itself, but we're hitting, we're pinching the D and the B at that point to open. And then we've got A3 and G2. Down, one fret, so. And then we hit that low E. strum in there and then the second time we're going to go we're going to pull off the G and the B That whole bit together would be coming out of this. Now that time, like I interchanged. That time I went first finger and third finger instead of pinching with the thumb, but you could do either. Back to the first pattern, and now to end that up, we're gonna go. I just love that part. So we've got open G, open E. Now, if you watch Paul Simon play that, he kind of does that there. You know, there's your G, there's your E, but I like it here because it can ring. Next chord is um, D4 and B3 then open D and B. Back to C3, or sorry, <laughs> a C note, A3, G2, down a fret. That's like basically an E7 chord, right? And then to finish that off, we're gonna go bop, ba 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 mute, bop, right? Hit it, mute. Right, so coming out of this, then all right, then. exact same thing again until we get to this section 
and now we're going to go. So this is a variation on the first pattern of that section, right? So instead of going, we're going to go, yes. And the bass is. So we go to that A string just that one time. And we're hitting the, the uh, D and G string. back to the E string with the thumb. Right? And then we're back to the, you know, we, we already know this section. Let's come out of this. back into this and now we're going to do variation on that which is so we're going to take that slide it up two frets to open that. Now we're going to go same as what we did before, but now we're going to add on to that by going. So we're going to get the open D with our thumb and the G with our first finger and the E with our third finger. And of course, we're on what is that? one, two, three, four, fifth fret from the capo, right? G, fifth fret, E. And we slide that down to that, you know, that's like a bar chord G, but just that, set, that part of it. And actually, it's only the G and E string. And you see, we're doing the bass twice there. So. Down two frets, then open. And then here, same same pattern, except just down a string. Back to this, A3 and G2. And then we just get the low E string, this is like an E chord, right? And get that fourth fret of the high E. And we're playing the B string and the E string. Let's take that whole thing, coming out of this.
And now we're going to go like this. All right, we already know how to do that. We do that three times and then we're going to go, you know, we're going to slam the strings with our, our palm, not our palm, but our tips of our fingers. I'm going to go. So that's it's a hammer. Another hammer there. Those are all hammers. Slam it again. Then, and I'm just using my finger to pick those notes out. And I'm leaving that in place the whole time, that C note on B2. So, a little hook on that. Rhythm on that last or that second time through is a little different. To pull off. <laughs> okay, it's actually really tricky to get you know just be super accurate with that finger. So that whole section, to finish it off we're going to go open D, G and B, bouncing off that low E, and then we're going to go just bar there and play open D, G2, B2, and then G4, B3, open D. Back down. All right, and then we're into the main look again. So, coming out of this, Change patterns. Okay, and then we go into the ending. The ending is super cool. The last pattern would be... So that's how I'm doing it. As I'm going to hit the E, open E, with my middle finger, right? And slide up to the E on B5. And slide back down. And then hit the C note on G3. Hopefully we're letting that E string ring. Then open A. Then E minor. Down, up, down. And now we're gonna hit this A sus2. And the rhythm on that is And we're going to end with this A major 7. We're just barring on the second and putting a little finger on E4. And that's what's known as a, a Picardi ending. 
be, uh, you know, any sign that's kind of in minor, and then you end on that major third is known as a Picardy ending. You'd have to Google that to get all the details. But, but we're also not only adding the third, we're adding the major seventh. And that's where it ends on the Paul Simon version. But what I did on the end is <laughs> I just sort of I threw in that sort of jazzy, um, it's just an A major seven arpeggio. So we're up here on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth from the capo. That's like the third, right? Sliding down to the major seven. fifth, major seven, back to the fifth. So, a little vibrato on that, major seven. So, just, you know, throw a little flavor on the ending there, right? Okay, so that is it. That's how to play Angie, the Paul Simon version, at least my interpretation of it. And like I said before, it's a fantastic song to learn for your finger picking uh, practice, you know, uh, to be able to separate in your mind, more or less. Um, because I find if it's clear in your mind, it becomes clear in your hands. Your just hands start to do it. But the only way to get clear in your mind is to break things down to super, super specific and super slow. Like that second pattern. You'll never ever play it fast if you can't play it slow. Anything you struggle with with a guitar, just break it down and play it super slow. And, you know, every now and then, like, go faster than you can play it, just to sort of remind your brain that you're not always going to be playing it this slow. And um, by going faster than you can play it, it will also kind of tell you. It'll just tell you. Just observe what you're doing, and, you know, your own hand, your own mind will tell you where you're screwing up. And then go back to playing slow until you can do it perfectly, as slow as you need to play it perfectly. All right, so that's about it for this one. Fantastic song. Really, really a great um, study in finger picking and being able to separate what your thumb is doing from your fingers because, you know, they're doing two completely separate things. So I hope you enjoy the lesson. I hope you enjoy applying it. And we'll talk to you next time.